Hello everyone, welcome. So you might be wondering where I am. I'm currently at my dad's house in Colorado. I am here for the Taylor Swift concert that's happening tomorrow actually, which is why the background is different and you know we don't have my regular bookshelf set up but it's fine because we can still talk about all the books and that's exactly what we're doing today because today I'm filming the mid-year book freak out tag. This is a tag from several years ago on booktube I've done it I think almost every year that I've been making videos. I believe the original creators video is now privated or gone um, so I can't link to them but I will leave the list of questions all in the description box with timestamps for when I answer each question so that you can jump around if you wish. But basically we're just going to be checking in halfway through the year on how my reading is going, how much I've read, my favorite books, least favorite books, what I still need to read, you get the gist, so let's dive into it. Quickly, before we get into all the books, I want to thank today's sponsor for this video, and that is Mila Note. Mila Note is a digital tool to help you organize your creative projects. You can make schedules, collect notes, brainstorm, make collages and idea boards, do all types of things to help you along with your creative work. It's for all type of creative work, whether you're a photographer, a reader, a writer, or a video maker. Mila Note has over a hundred different templates for different types of boards that you would want to create, so there's something for everyone. I particularly like using Mila Note to plan and schedule things out for myself to keep myself organized. Also lately I've really liked using it for some like creative ideas I've had for potentially writing something in the future, which is the first time I'm actually talking about this publicly. <laughs> I obviously can't show you the specifics of my personal board that I'm using for this, but this is an idea of what you could do if you were plotting out something and you wanted to, you know, connect all of your characters together and kind of give you a space to visually brainstorm your ideas. I find it really really helpful for things like that, whether it's a writing project or whether I'm just trying to keep track of the characters I'm reading about in a book. So there are so many different things that you can do with it and it's incredibly useful. And the great thing is Mila Note is completely free to use with no time limit, so you can use the link in my description to sign up now and start working on your creative projects. Thank you so much to Mila Note for sponsoring this video, but without any further ado let's get into talking about the books I've read so far this year and my thoughts on them. Question one is the best book that you've read so far in 2023. For me this is pretty easy. There's only one book that has really stood out to me of everything that I've read as like the main true five star. I've given other books five stars throughout the year so far but this one has been like a personal favorite favorite and that is definitely The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chakshi. This book is phenomenal. I really don't want to describe too much about this book. It's very much the type of thing I think you should just go into without knowing much about it. Definitely do look up content warnings. It's a bit of a darker book at times and there's some graphic stuff in it because it is a little bit kind of gothic. I don't know if you'd necessarily call it gothic, but I feel like you could call it somewhat along those lines. If you want to read about complicated, messy characters and that kind of like toxic female friendship that you can have in your youth and how those relationships develop and the impact they have on you, this is the book for you. This book is so good. It spoke to something in my soul. It was something that I did not know that I needed to read. It is so beautifully written and it's just truly like easily best book I've read this year. I think it's extremely underrated. Like I know it came out just this year and I know plenty of people did read it but I feel like everyone kind of just ignored it or forgot about it after it came out. I don't see people talking about it that much and I don't see people hyping it up and I feel like they should because I just think it's so good and I want more people to love it and read it. So yeah, that one easily is my favorite book of the year. Question two is the best sequel you've read so far this year. I think I've read a total of three or four sequels so far this year and I definitely have to give it to this one as the best one because I really enjoyed this book and that is A Fire Endless by Rebecca Ross. This is the second book in the River Enchanted series. I'm not sure what the name of the duology is but this is the second one and I just finished reading it. I think it's actually the most recent book that I read. It is. I really loved this series. When I first read A River Enchanted, I think I described it as somewhat reminding me of the best parts of Outlander and the CW TV show Rain, both of which I don't actually like very much, but there are certain elements to them that I really like. And this is a story set in Scotland and it's a fantasy with Scottish mythology and lore. So there are a lot of the same elements there, but there was so much about this that I just absolutely loved. I really, really love Rebecca. Ross's writing style and I read three of her books this year and I've loved all of them. So yeah this was definitely my favorite sequel so if this interests you highly recommend this duology. I think it was really great. Also they have beautiful covers so they look very nice on my bookshelf. Question three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. For me this easily has to go to Yellowface by RF Kuang. I was supposed to go to her book tour for this actually and I had bought my ticket and everything and I was so excited to go and then unfortunately, 
like a lot has happened to me over the past few months and I've not been able to do a lot. I haven't been able to go anywhere because I've had to uh, stay home and take care of my family. So I couldn't go and it was very, very sad because I really, really wanted to go and I was so excited to read this book and I just have not had the time. I've been reading a lot less over the past few months, again, because of like my circumstances and stuff. So I have not gotten around to this yet, but I desperately want to. I know I'm really gonna enjoy this book. My sister has already read this book and she's telling me to read it too. So yeah, I definitely need to. This is a top priority for me throughout the rest of the year, one I absolutely must get to before the end of the year. Question four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. This one for me easily has to go to A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I am also very, very lucky and grateful to have already gotten an arc of this book, so I can read it already, but it doesn't come out until September 19th, I believe, 2023, so it won't be out for another several months. However, I will be reading it ASAP. Like, the second I get home and I finally have some free time, I am reading this book. I am so excited. <laughs> Ava Reed has quickly become one of my favorite authors. I read both of their books last year and Juniper and Thorn was like one of my favorite books I read last year. I think it was technically my second favorite. Personally, like that's just now one of my new all-time, all-time favorite books. And now I'm just so excited for their YA debut because this book sounds so good. It's a dark academia story. It has romance in it. It just sounds like everything that I will absolutely love and I already know that I love Ava Reed's writing so this is set up to be like definitely one of my favorite books of the year so I can't wait to read this and I can't wait for it to come out. Question five is your biggest disappointment. I think most of you will know what I'm going to say for this and this unfortunately has to go to Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare for me. I filmed a whole reading vlog for it. I've talked about it in a couple videos now I think. I did not hate this book by any means. I definitely didn't. I still enjoyed my time reading it like I filmed a whole hour or something long video for it. However, it did not live up to my expectations and there were definitely a lot of things about it that I personally did not enjoy. Ignore the slight angle change, my camera died on me. It was just so sad to have the final book in one of what was going to be my all-time favorite series end on such a disappointing note. I expected so much more from this story and unfortunately it just did not, it did not meet my expectations and I'm still devastated over it. I think I'm, it's gonna take me a while to to get over this one. <laughs> Question six is your biggest surprise. For this one, I'm gonna go with Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I say this because this book has gotten really, really hyped in the past like few weeks, especially on TikTok and on booktube and bookstagram and everything. I decided to read it because I read A River Enchanted earlier this year and then I was reading A uh, Fire Endless as well and I knew I liked Rebecca Ross's writing. So I decided to try this book too. And then the hype around it started building and I'd already started the book. So I put it down for like a little while because the second the hype started, I was like, oh no, what if I don't like it now that it's gotten really popular? I don't want this to, you know, influence my expectations of the book or anything like that. So because of the hype, I was thinking I might not end up liking this as much as I was hoping, but thankfully that was not the case. So I was pretty surprised actually by how much I loved this. I think this is a fantastic book. I believe this is also going to be a duology. The second book is set to come out, I think at the end of this year or the beginning of next year or something, but I like, I needed immediately because the cliffhanger at the end of this book was rough. <laughs> there are elements to it that are absolutely absolutely five stars. I do have some criticisms of it. I feel like the pacing is a little bit rushed at times, but overall for a fantasy romance with like rivals to lovers, I feel like this was just so, so well done. It was really, really addictive to read. I could not stop turning the pages and I didn't want to put it down. So I was really, really surprised by how much I loved this, even knowing how much I liked Rebecca Ross's other books. I can support the hype behind this one. And it's definitely one of my favorite things I've read so far this year. And I'm very, very, excited for the second book. Question number seven is a new favorite author. This can either be a debut author or an author that is new to you. For this, I think I'm gonna have to go with Silvia Moreno-Garcia who wrote The Beautiful Ones. Uh, this is the book I read by her this year and I really wanna read Mexican Gothic. I think I'm really gonna love that book and a lot of people have already told me that they think I'll really love that book as well. But I just really loved the writing in this book and it was so compulsively readable. It was beautifully written but also very, very easy to read. And it has definitely made me want to read her other work. So yeah, definitely for me, a new favorite author. There are others, Rebecca Ross, who I talked about multiple times already in this video, loved the three books I've read by her this year. But yeah, definitely Sylvia Moreno-Garcia has to be the top for me. I'm so excited to read more of her work and I just, I know I'm gonna love them. Question number eight is your newest fictional crush. I really do not know who to pick for this. I don't think I have a fictional crush from this year. I have read like 20 volumes of Yona of the Dawn this year. So maybe I can pick Hawk or the Blue Dragon 
as a fictional crush, but like they're not new to me because I started that series last year. <laughs> and honestly, like I can't even think of like a new character where I'm like, yes, I love you so much. You're my favorite, my child, let me protect you. Honestly, the only person I can think of, and like this is probably bad, but I can't help it, I love him. It's Kendall Roy from Succession. <laughs> I watched Succession earlier this year and I have become utterly obsessed with that show. And I, I genuinely want a t-shirt that says I am the eldest boy on it with Kendall's face on it because I would wear it all the time because I am the eldest boy. <laughs> but yeah, that's really all I can think of. I don't think I have like a new favorite character from any of these books that I've read. I do really like Iris and Roman. I think those are their names from Divine Rivals. Um, they were really great characters. But yeah, overall, I don't think I have have like a new favorite fictional character. I haven't found one yet this year. Hopefully maybe in the second half of the year. Oh, and then question nine is new favorite character. So that kind of answers both of those questions. So we'll just go to the next one. <laughs> question 10 is a book that made you cry. So I don't think I've technically cried during any of the books I've read this year. I think I teared up a couple of times when I read uh, The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. And the one that made me come the closest to actually crying is definitely As Long As the Lemon Trees Grow. This is objectively the saddest book I've read so far this year. This was truly, truly heartbreaking. Honestly, if you decide to read this, definitely with content warnings, it's hard to get through. It is so, so hard, but it's so beautifully written and such a fantastic story. So worth the hype, uh, but more people should still read it. And also Zulfa, the author, is phenomenal. She's great. Love her. So yeah, highly recommend this book if you want to cry, like because you probably will. The only reason I didn't fully ball my eyes out was because I was just like not in the state to cry because you know sometimes that happens but it it is a tearjerker for sure question 11 is a book that made you happy there are a couple different things i could go with definitely the 20 or so volumes of yona of the dawn have made me happy i love reading those they're just so enjoyable for me i did also reread the little prince this year which is one of my all-time favorite books and all-time favorite classics i love this book so much it had been years since i'd read it so i was really happy to reread it this year that definitely made me happy that book also makes me cry a little though but it's like happy tears and everything else I've read so far has been more along the lines of sad or emotional or just a little dark. So I think I'd probably have to go with those two. I'm not a very happy book person, if you couldn't tell. But yeah, those are probably the ones I'd go with. Question 12 is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. It's definitely got to go to either the Fairy Loot edition of Divine Rivals. This book is so pretty. I literally ended up ordering this because I was reading the book and I was like, I'm liking this so much. Like I want a pretty edition of it. So I went to go look up which edition to order and I didn't like the US edition or the UK cover but I saw the fairy loot edition and I was like I need it and I'm very happy because I bought it like really early on because if you go and try and find it now this book is like $200 I did not pay that much for it <laughs> and I'm very glad now that I bought it at the time that I did because this book is stunning the end papers are beautiful with gold foiling the cover is gorgeous the sprayed edges which I'm not even that big of a fan of sprayed edges but these were really really pretty they have these letters all the way down so it's very on theme with the book and then the other book I got was the fairy loot edition of Sorcery of Thorns. Yes, I was able to actually get this and it came to me several months late because it got lost in the mail. They had to send a replacement and stuff, which was very nice of them. But yeah, it finally did get to me. I was very, very lucky, um, thankfully to one of you who was so kind and let me use their code so I could get this edition of the book. And so yes, I did order it and I do have it and it is sitting on my bookshelf and it's very beautiful and I love it. And lastly, question 13 is, what is a book that you need to read by the end of the year? I already kind of answered this with a Study in Drowning and Yellowface. Those are kind of the two that I'm mostly looking forward to reading by the end of the year. They're high priority books for me, so those are definitely going to be my two choices for this. But there you all have it. That is it for the mid-year book freakout tag. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Let me know in the comments down below what your answers are to all of these questions and what book you're looking most forward to reading throughout the second half of the year. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye.